hey, happy Tuesday. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. Oh, yes. So, welcome aboard. Today is Tuesday, March 19th, 2019, and it is episode 268 of The Daily Dope. So, welcome aboard. If this is your first time watching the show, this is a live stream. It's very, very casual. Normally, I devote the show to an unboxing of a, of a tabletop game or maybe a first look at an RPG book, or a lot of times I do reviews. So, on today's show, and I am actually dressed accordingly for it as well, I am going to be unboxing and taking a look at Clutch Baseball. I've got three of these one player starter sets. These are like starter teams. Uh, There are uh, three of them that came out for last year. So this is 2018 edition. So I'm going to take a look at these. There's also some booster packs that were sent along. This is kind of a trading card baseball game and uh, looks pretty interesting. It's from a company called Clutch Hobbies. So that's coming up in just a little bit. But do want to mention because this is a live stream chat is available on youtube it's not on screen it's one of the ways that i keep some of these stranger commenters at bay but i do pay attention to the chat so if you want to say hello or maybe you have a question or possibly there's something about clutch baseball you'd like to get a closer look at by all means chime in and i will respond so if you watch the video and you like it please give it a thumbs up if you check out some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you happen to dig those, please subscribe. And don't forget, ring that bell because if you do, you'll be notified every time there's a new video up and you will also be notified when the stream goes live. And I also have to ask, please tell your friends. Share the Daily Dope with a friend. Share thegaminggang.com with a friend. That's one of the, the best ways to uh, to introduce people to uh, my website and uh, my live stream. So there you have it. So I've got some uh, some pretty cool news today. I've got uh, actually a couple of Kickstarters I'm going to talk about. And those of you who watch all the time know that I do not do a lot of Kickstarter stuff. But uh, there are two very, very interesting Kickstarters that I'm going to be talking about today as far as the news I know there are some folks out there who are not fans of the tabletop gaming news of the day. If you fall into that category, please take a look at the show notes below. You will see there are timestamps. You can jump ahead. If you want to jump right into the clutch baseball unboxing, you can. As long as you're not watching live. (laughs) Sorry. Can't jump into the future just yet. So let's jump on into the news. Because King Raccoon Games and Gray Fox Games are teaming to bring a new edition of the wildly imaginative Tsukuyumi. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Tsukuyumi. Full moon down. And to the masses. It's through a Kickstarter. And here's the dope. Tsukuyumi Full Moon Down is a unique board game set in an original setting envisioned by designer and artist Felix Murdicat. Guessing on that. Set in a future where the moon has crashed to the Earth's surface and caused immense chaos, devastating mankind, and mutating a number of species. It's a game that focuses on strategy, skill, and the unique characteristics of each faction. Do you overwhelm the battlefield with the mighty swarm that is the Dark Seed? Or do you pick and choose your fights with the mobility, weaponry, and guerrilla warfare of the Nomads? Maybe it's the cold science and technological advantage of the cyber samurai that appeals to you, or the tenacity and ferociousness of the mighty boar lords. No matter who you choose, everyone faces the Oni, the servants of the white dragon who inhabits the moon. 
Variability is the name of the game with Tsukuyumi, and not just because of the diverse factions. From the mission-oriented two-player mode to the six-player Battle Royale with the expansion, you can never have to play the same game twice. Not only can you choose who you play and how you play, but there are more than 40 tiles to choose from to make the battlefield different every time you play. Choose your game modes, choose your faction, then choose your battlefield and fight for world domination in Tsukuyumi, full moon down. Tsukuyumi is a highly asymmetrical strategy game involving deep gameplay and an immersive story. It's been launched once before and released to rave reviews from both the Dice Tower and Board Game Geek community. This time, however, we are including miniature figures, giving this game the treatment it deserves. We also have a few new surprises planned along the way, and we hope you join us. So King Raccoon and Gray Fox have put together a video. It is a little bit longer than most of the Kickstarter videos that pop up. It is almost four minutes, but it will really give you a great idea of exactly what you'll get with Tsukuyumi Full Moon Down. When the age of humans was at its apex, humankind took it upon themselves to travel to the moon and to destroy the last kami, the imprisoned dragon, Tsukuyumi. They sought to secure their power over the world, but they failed. Now, the moon has come hurtling back to Earth, drastically altering the landscape and emitting such power as to rapidly mutate and evolve the creatures of the Earth. Tsukuyumi is still trapped, but he is awake. His faceless servants, the Oni, gather to restore him to power. New races of creatures confront each other for control. Humanity is all but destroyed. Tsukuyumi is a strategic miniatures game for two to four players. Each player takes on a unique faction fighting for dominance over the world that exists after the moonfall. Add the expansion to play with up to six players in an epic post-apocalyptic struggle to fulfill your faction's personal goals. Play as the Cyber Samurai, the descendants of the humans who tried to destroy the Kami before the moonfall. These artificial beings still bear their ancestors' human motivations for fighting Tsukuyumi. The Cyber Samurai are planners and strategists, utilizing their units and uplink technologies to influence enemies and manipulate the outcome's combat in their favor. Lead the Boar Lords in their quest to bring glory to the Boar Mother. These rapidly evolved animals seek to end humanity's rule on Earth and have already begun plundering mankind's cities and adorning themselves with artifacts from the Old World. The Boar Lords are strong and clever with the ability to terraform the map and create tunnels and strongholds to leverage their power. They are conquerors who wish to draw out confrontations until they build their abilities to a peak. Command the Nomads, the last soldiers of the U.S. Navy who were at sea when the world changed and now regard their decaying aircraft carrier as their permanent home. Their goal is to save, repair, and preserve everything that still bears witness to the old world. The Nomads like to hit and run. Fast and agile, their knowledge of weapons let them be effective attackers, but they can be soft targets for other factions. Swarm across the world as the Dark Sea, masses of insects who have thrived in the energy flowing from the fallen god. United by the Insect Queen, the Dark Seed have risen to destroy their creator, Tsukuyumi, before his power makes them slaves to his will. They are fast and fragile, but have no fear of sacrifice for the good of the swarm. The Dark Seed are great at spreading their influence quickly across all the world. And these factions are just the beginning. Mechs, beast riders, dragons, whales, and more. With tons of additional and exclusive content, no two games of Tsukuyumi will ever play out the same. Help us unlock stretch goals and expand the world of Tsukuyumi. Pledge today and lead your faction to victory.
Sukuyumi Full Moon Down is for two to four players, ages 14 and up, plays in around an hour and a half to two and a half hours, and you can reserve a copy of the core game for a $99 pledge, or, well, that includes stretch goals too. Or the core game, Stretch Goals, and the After the Moonfall expansion for a $149 pledge through April 12th. There are a variety of other pledges for people who already own the game, plus there's also that five and six player expansion available as well. Expected delivery for all of this is January of next year. Interesting. Now, I remember originally posting the news for this when it was, I, I swear, I think it was only through King Raccoon Games. I think Gray Fox Games is kind of uh, new to this game, that they're actually teaming with King Raccoon to uh, to get the uh, the miniatures and everything out. I gotta say, it sounds pretty cool. I mean, $99, I believe there's something like 120 miniatures in it. And one of the things that, uh, that struck me is I get a kick out of the moon has crashed into the earth. But uh, that reminded me of the uh, the novel Seven Eves, which I want to say is, I think it's from Neil Stephenson, Stephenson uh, which I read about three years ago. And it was very, very cool. And it's about how, you know, the moon breaks up and it's hitting the earth. And of course, it's going to wipe out all humanity in that. Very, very interesting game, or not game, very, very interesting novel, I should say. But this does look like a pretty cool game. And uh, I was going to say, I remember I saw all the standees because the miniatures are replacing the standees. And I remember seeing some pictures. And I thought, wow, that's like a ton of standees to be on your game table. So pretty cool. So check that out. It just launched today. It is, um, it's got a pretty good sized goal. But uh, about two hours ago is already about 50% to the goal. So, and it just started at uh, about, I think, one o'clock my time. So, pretty sweet. Okay, so, AEG has revealed another of the big game night games for Gen Con 2019. And I've got just a wee bit of dope on Point Salad. Point Salad, designed by the team at Flat Out Games, is a fast-playing, easy-to-learn card drafting game. All cards have two sides. One side features one of six veggies, the other side one of 120 possible scoring methods. Collect cards for either their veggie side or their scoring side. Then score your veggies based on all the scoring methods you've collected. But be careful, some scoring methods may result in negative points for some veggies. Don't let your perfect salad be spoiled. Cards come in six different types of veggies, and the back of each card has a different scoring method. So, for instance, one scoring method may award two points for every carrot you have, but deduct a point for every onion. By drafting combinations of veggies and point cards that work for your strategy, you can amass the most points and win. The game is for two to six players, ages 14 and up, plays in around 15 to 30 minutes. Point salad will be included in the big AEG box, if you take part in the big game night, which usually packs them in at Gen Con, this game will also be available to gamers everywhere, carrying an MSRP of $19.99 when it comes out this summer. I gotta admit, this sounds kind of fun, kind of interesting. I could see where uh, it would be kind of, yeah, kind of interesting to try to have to juggle the veggies being worth the most points and then drafting cards to make sure that you're getting the best scoring combinations could be pretty interesting. So something to keep an eye on. There are going to be three games, as far as I understand, that are going to be included in the big game night box. So uh, stay tuned. As more is revealed, I will definitely share that news as well. So let's move on to some role-playing game news because Chaosium has released the latest Call of Cthulhu 7th edition, source book, it's in PDF, and I've got the dope on Berlin, the Wicked City. Unveiling the mythos in Weimar, Germany. 
In the aftermath of the Great War, Berlin has a reputation for licentiousness, <laughs> a place where anything may be had for the right price. It is both a city of hedonism and a city of business. Its streets overflow with disabled veterans, prostitutes, destitute immigrants, and political agitators, all rubbing shoulders with button-down businessmen, scholars, and artists. The gutters run with the blood of political assassinations, where communist and Volkish nationalists clash with each other, as well as with the police. Long into the evenings, Berlin's world-famous cabard... Ah, I almost said cabernets. Not their famous wines. Their famous cabarets. Offer music, dance, and titillating entertainment in stark contrast to the gray buildings that run on for endless miles along the sprawling city's byways. Into this bubbling stew, Secrets of Berlin introduces the weird elements of the Cthulhu mythos, a hotbed of occult organizations, strange cults, and half-whispered lore. Amid the wicked air of the world's capital of sin, the very nature of what it means to be human is questioned, and as the city hurtles towards its inevitable dark destiny, the oppressive atmosphere pushes the sanity of investigators to its breaking point. This book presents an overview of 1920s Berlin as it would be experienced by visitors and residents of the time. Guidelines are presented for creating investigators for a Berlin-centric campaign, as well as investigator organizations to help bind groups together. Notable personalities, key locations, and a system for generating details of the urban landscape on the fly are provided. With crime and punishment, the city's underworld, and also its high culture detailed, the tools provided keep the keeper gaining an understanding of what makes Berlin unique. There are three scenarios spanning the history of Berlin between the end of the Great War and the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. It contains colorful details of Berlin and its inhabitants and may be run as standalone adventures or linked together to form a mini campaign. Call Cthulhu Berlin, the Wicked City is available in PDF. You can score all 272 pages from DriveThruRPG for $19.99. This just became available today. And uh, very interesting, very interesting. A new uh, Call of Cthulhu supplement. And I got to admit, okay, now I, not to be rude or anything, but I'm glad to see that that one artist that chaosium has been using a lot for Call of Cthulhu releases, and I don't know their name off the top of my head. But if you do pick up Call of Cthulhu books, uh, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about because the, their artwork, uh, their, 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 the people just look really weird, almost caricature-ish. Even if they're just regular, you know, Joe Blow kind of guy, they have this oddball look to them. And I don't really care for that artwork. Thankfully, I'm not seeing that on the cover of this. So fingers crossed that people were kind of like, because it was kind of a turnoff, to be honest. Um, just really bizarre. Anyway, but pretty cool. This looks like a uh, pretty interesting supplement. And I would hope that uh, Chaosium doesn't fall into that trap of where, you know, you start, if you introduce Nazis into Call of Cthulhu or any kind of Lovecraftian games, uh, it kind of, it sort of becomes a little knee jerk sometimes where it's sort of like, oh, well, we can blame the forces of, you know, the old ones or, you know, cultists and stuff like that, uh, kind of pigeonhole the evils of the Nazis as in like, oh, well, here's the excuse where it's like, uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's one thing that I have to admit. Um, Cubicle 7 did a really good job with World War Cthulhu was uh, separating the uh, the evil of the mythos from the evil, the very human evil of the Nazis. So really, really impressed how well they, they did that. So, all right. And my final news piece. There is a role-playing Kickstarter, which has caught my eye because it's actually aimed at helping children who happen to be on the autism spectrum. And I've got the dope on Critical Core. 
Critical Core is a tabletop role-playing game designed to help kids on the autism spectrum build social skills and confidence. It's a great way to pair, great way for parents, I should say, to engage with their children at home and for professionals and experienced gamers to use as a group social skills tool. Critical Core is brought to you by game to grow a 501c3 not-for-profit organization and co-developed with autism advocates, parents, therapists, and educators. The Critical Core starter set has everything you need to play. The game has been tuned to be as easy as possible to get started and stay engaged. There's a facilitator's guide, which is for parents, therapists, and game masters with best practices on running fun and effective therapeutic gaming groups. There's the player and game master guides, some quick start rules and playing guides for players and, of course, game masters. You've got adventure modules, tested and tuned to be challenging and fun. You'll also receive four sets of dice, one for each player and one for the game master, enough to run a three-player game out of the box. There are character sheets with four popular hero archetypes, each with their own unique abilities. There's also game cards, which are not required for play, but are helpful aids for both players and game masters for visualization, quick reference rules, and spell cards. There's also game tokens to help with visualization and for working uh, with the included map, which is reusable and whiteboard marker friendly. So grow to game, uh, game to Grow, I should say, is uh, it's fairly new. They do have a pretty cool video, it runs a little more than two minutes. So let's take a peek. social problem solving, emotional thinking, and dealing with change can all be really difficult for people on the autism spectrum. Critical Core provides a safe and fun environment to develop these skills, and it naturally taps into each child's inner drive. Playing Critical Core has helped me reduce my anger a lot, and it helps me understand how other people feel. After playing Critical Core, I I feel like I've been able to understand people better and I feel like I'm able to listen to others easier. After playing Critical Core, he is happier. Um, I remember the very first time he sat at the circle and he said, that was awesome. That was the best hour and a half I ever had. We see our son come home with a smile on his face. Role-playing games have been the cornerstone of our therapy work for the past seven years, helping teens and adolescents build valuable social skills. And now, we're ready to bring the amazing therapeutic benefits of intentional gaming to a wider audience with Critical Core. game to grow is a nonprofit organization, and every dollar from this project will go towards producing the game and then training and supporting the families and organizations who need it the most. And Critical Core is not just for autism. It's a great tool to introduce the creative and social benefits of role-playing games to everyone. So please be a part of Critical Core and help us spread the positive impact of role-playing games. Your help is essential, so pledge now. You can reserve a copy of Critical Core as well as its stretch goals in digital format for a $30 pledge, or you can reserve the physical starter box and stretch goals for a $50 pledge through April 26th. I do not know right off the top of my head when expected delivery is, so just to point that out, but I think this is pretty cool. I think this is pretty nicely done. And uh, I, I definitely like the artwork that they're showing, that they've been sharing, really nice. One thing I do want to point out, you can kind of tell that this isn't 
kind of like kiddied down. So this looks like, you know, regular fantasy role playing, except the way it's been designed is to cater more towards children who are on that autism spectrum. Now, granted, you don't have to have children with autism to be interested in this product either. So pretty, pretty sweet. Although one thing that kind of throws me off a little bit is the name of it, Critical Core. That almost strikes me as it's sort of like, let's let's piggyback on the popularity of Critical Role. Because, I mean, really, Critical Core, would that be a, like a role-playing game kind of you know name that you would jump onto? I don't know. So that's a one, one thing that I thought was a little bit odd about that Kickstarter, but still a very, very worthy uh, cause, I would say, most definitely. All right, so that's it for the news today. Kind of quiet in chat tonight. We don't have the uh, the usual gang floating around, it looks like. So do want to point out uh, what's coming up on the show this week. So tomorrow is War Game Wednesday. I am going to be taking a look at, I'm going to be unboxing and taking the first look at Red Devils. This is for the Sergeant's Miniatures game from Lost Battalion Games. So this is one of the core games. So we are going to be taking a look at this as well as, because I got a few things. Uh, I got a few things from Lost Battalion Games. So we're kind of splitting it in half. And then I got these two boxes, which I have no idea what are in here. I think they are probably more miniatures. So we will be looking at that. So that's on tomorrow's show. On Thursday, I love handling RPGs on Thursday. So I am going to review the Laughter of Dragons for the One Ring role-playing game from my friends over at Cubicle 7 Entertainment. So that will be on Thursday's show. Then on Friday's show, I am going to review Call to Adventure. Yes, Call to Adventure from Brother Wise Games. I just did the unboxing for this uh, last week. So, pretty cool, pretty sweet. Still up in the air on if uh, I'm going to take a vacation next week or not. Still waiting to find out from my brother what they've got planned for their spring break and if uh, they need me to be uh, like house-sitting for them to watch the menagerie of pets. So I don't know. All right, so it is that time to bring on down Lil Wizbub. That's right, Lil Wizbub's coming to visit again because as those of you who watch the show religiously know, this is a non-profit uh, system here. <laughs> so what I do do is I actually ask for folks who like the gaming gang or if they happen to watch the Daily Dope, they consider making a small donation to Lil Bub's Big Fund and the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Yes, that's right. Lil Bub's Big Fund helps support special needs animals who are awaiting adoption. 100% of all funds that are raised are granted out to organizations who help these special needs animals awaiting finding their forever homes. And, you know, they might be older, they might require some medications, they may have mobility issues, or maybe they're blind or deaf. Who knows? But these animals still deserve a good home, and if you do adopt one, you're going to get any kind of love you give them paid back like tenfold, I swear. So, as I like to point out, uh, Lil Bub's big fund has raised... Uh, a lot of money has raised loads and loads of money. It has raised over uh, half a million dollars since uh, since it was uh, created. I think it was created about six years ago. And Lil Bub has actually been able to uh, donate over five million bowls of Halo pet food to uh, animal shelters around the country as well. So pretty sweet. Pretty cool. So there's your uh, little, little Bub action for the day. Okay, so I know folks are tuning in because they want to check out Clutch Baseball, which is from Clutch Hobbies. It's designed by Michael Bomonti, Jordan Lati, I'm taking a guess on that, and Sean Norberg with graphic design by Michael Bomonti. The game is for two players, ages 13 and up, plays in around 30 to 60 minutes, 
and the one player starter sets that we're going to be taking a look at the 2018 are currently on sale for eight dollars and 99 cents i think it was 8.99 or 9.99 one of the two while the new 2019 two player or i shouldn't say two player one player sets will carry a 19 dollar and 99 cent msrp when they come out uh there are pre-orders that are out there right now for the um for all the 2019 cards so i've got uh, three of these so we see that there's a letter in the upper right corner here telling us which one of these uh decks which one of these teams these starter teams we will have i've also got some boosters i've got a clutch 42 i've taken a wild stab that this is going to be maybe this is negro league because 42 obviously that's jackie robinson uh, so it's either uh, Negro League or maybe it's just classic players. Uh, we got Generations. See, this is what I would think would be the classic players. So this is a booster pack. And then I've got this black pack here, which is, it seems to be a little thicker than these two. So I think this is one of the mystery packs that they've got uh, available too. So... We're gonna crack these open. So first off, we're gonna take a look at uh, some of these uh, these team decks. And uh, let me throw my reading specs on here. I gotta point out, I am a huge baseball fan. I'm a baseball fanatic, obviously, Cubs fan. And uh, I have played, well, let's see. I think that I wanna say the first baseball simulation like board game I played was uh, Stratomatic Baseball. No, I'm sorry, it was status pro baseball from avalon hill that's right that was the first baseball game i played and that would have been back in 1981 so when i was a freshman in high school because we uh we played a lot of that um i played St uh, stratomatic tons of stratomatic in fact one of the one of the more popular videos on the channel is my 2016 review for the stratomatic baseball game uh, so Shirko Baseball, APBA, which I was never a big fan, um, Pennant Race, which I think became like Diamond Dynasty or something like that as far as a, a uh, computer game. I play uh, Out of the Park Baseball every year. So so this is a one-player starter set. It includes 25 players, 20 strategies, and five stadiums. I'm surprised they say stadiums and not parks. Because uh, usually baseball fields are referred to as parks, very rarely uh, stadiums. So we see it's going to tell us who's on each of these teams for E, C, and W. Gives a little, little idea of uh, what the cards look like. I do understand that for 2019 they have changed uh, the layout of the cards. So uh, I guess they're supposed to be a little clearer to make out. So it says, this is Clutch Baseball, an exciting, fast-paced fantasy card game. Your starter set includes one of three pre-made teams to learn the basics. What's in the box? Yes, 25 players, East, Central, or West. Ah, so that's what the E, C, and W stand for. Uh, 20 strategies, five stadiums, gameplay mat, and two die. And it says, quick start guide. So you get two dice with this? Because I believe... This takes a 20-sided die and I think like a 24-sided die. So let's open this up. Let's take a look here. Sure enough, yeah. So we get a 20-sided die and I think that's a 24-sided die, folks. Well, that's cool. <laughs> well, I got to be honest. If these are on sale for like $8.99, I think like a, <laughs> I think like a 24-sided die is usually about 3 bucks. So... And these are cut. These aren't uh, just painted right on. So we've got a 20 and... Because I was kind of taking a look to... Because uh... usually what I... I don't really look into anything when I do an unboxing, right? I don't even read the back of the box. So everything's like super fresh and things like that. But I was trying to figure out what these two boosters were. So I was kind of like... I was looking around on the um, Clutch Baseball website... And it's funny how Clutch Hobbies actually contacted me because uh, on Twitter, I had posted and said, hey, 
I think uh, this looks really cool because I somebody I think had tweeted it said I think this looks really cool but I haven't seen any reviews for it as in tabletop gaming reviews uh, so uh, I got uh, I got a message from the folks over at the <laughs> the Twitter account saying hey would you like to review it we'd love to send you some stuff so I was like sure and sure enough here it is so I believe it says that uh, each team includes a rare foil. So this is Chris Sale. So Chris Sale is a rare foil. So let's uh, put this off to the side for a second here. So we got the quick start guide. So here's the other thing that I, I understand is that there is an advanced game. This is kind of a basic game here. There is an advanced game. Uh, the rule book is about, I think it was like 37 or 39 pages in length. So you download that from the Clutch Moments website. So it's clutchmoments.com where you can get the uh, the uh, advanced rules because it's supposed to cover pretty much like everything. So I have not looked at that. Uh, I'm a little surprised that it's not in the box, but you figure 32 page <laughs> rule book, 30, well, say 40 page rule book, Maybe be a little tough to squeeze into here. Plus, then you're looking at, you know, a higher cost. Although for $19.99, I would think, which is the usual price, I would think they'd squeeze a squeeze that in. Okay, so we've got a quick start guide. So it says, uh, each at bat includes four basic elements. The pitch, which determines the advantage, and the swing, which determines the result. So we got pitch, advantage, swing, and result. So we got a basic at bat sequence. So we got uh, so it looks like Justin Verlander, and I'm going to take a guess. This is Giancarlo Stanton. So the pitch, the defense rolls a twenty sided die, right or die right here, adds the pitcher's command. In this instant, Verlander's command is six. Okay, so that I guess that's six is the command number. Uh, it looks as if I'm taking a guess here. You know, we can zoom in a little bit. Let's zoom in just a wee bit. Okay. Because we're going to look at the cards too. So I'm going to take a guess that, uh, see how it says it shows R. So we got the diamond there and we've got R over at first base. We got an R over here at first base. I'm taking a guess that's the handedness of the player because Verlander's a righty. And Giancarlo Stanton is a right-hander, is a right-handed hitter. So I'm taking a guess at that. And uh, at home plate, there's like a number there. So we'll find out what that is. Okay, so uh, defense rolls a 20-sided ray or die and adds a pitcher's command. So in this instance, Verlander's command is six. Advantage, if the total number is higher than the batters on base. Aha, okay then I guess I'm betting we're going to read this from the pitcher card. The total number is higher than batters on base advantage pitcher. If the total number is tied or lower than the batters on base advantage batter. In this instance, Stanton's on base is 12. His L plus one statistic is not activated. So, okay, so I, uh, okay, against lefties, I bet you you're adding one. So that becomes a 13. Uh, so that's giving you kind of like a, a little bit of a platoon split. Let's see. So, uh, so right. So we got six plus 20 versus 12. So the swing, the offense rolls a regular die unless the pitcher has rolled a mistake pitch, a pitch that falls into his X range. In these instances, the off offense will roll. Yeah. Okay. So that is a 24 sided die. The power die. So the result of the at bat will be determined on the chart of whom, excuse me, whomever gained the advantage. Strategy stadium cards can also affect the result. Okay, so it says starter sets have been provided with a full team using a six thousand point salary cap. Yeah, no money. <laughs> I didn't think there'd be money involved in this. Uh, and enough strategy and stadium cards for one team to get started. We recommend playing for a bit without using strategy or stadium cards to get the hang of basic game mechanics. This guide will teach you only the essential rules get started. 
So game setup, roll to see who's the home team, choose a starting pitcher, shuffle your strategy cards, place them down on the game mat, draw three to start the game, and one every half inning. Next, build a lineup consisting of one batter for every position, plus a DH. Hey. Wait a second. So you have to use a DH for National League? I don't know. There better not be there better be a rule saying what the you get a pitcher's card or something. <laughs> Cause that would be a problem. Seriously. I mean, honestly, that would actually be a problem because if you're simulating baseball and you're not gonna have a pitcher batting then you're not simulating National League Baseball. Uh, so we got uh, Gameplay the Stadium card provides an overall game effect. Okay, this is real baseball. Your existing baseball knowledge is your best friend when getting started. Play full game cons consisting of three outs per inning. Uh, that is not correct. It's six outs per inning. It's three outs per half inning. That's how you uh, trick people. And uh, it's a good, that's a good day, uh, like bar question. How many outs are in an inning? And they'll say, ah, uh, three. It's like, no, sorry. <laughs> it's six. All right, let's see. Um, ready to play for real? There you go. See, download the full rule book, clutchmoment.com slash rule book. And then, is there like an app for this game? Because <laughs> it's like, doesn't that look like somebody's playing on their phone? Huh. Okay, this does look interesting. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm gonna zoom back out because uh, I believe this takes up some space. Let's take a look at this. Oh, hey, you know what? I was thinking this was gonna be just really super cheap paper or something. It's not. It's actually, uh, it's actually pretty nice. I mean, granted, it's still it's still paper. I did see that there's a. Uh, there's a mat that looks pretty sweet. It's uh, it looked like it's made out of uh, that uh, mouse pad material. So, okay, so we've got well each player here. So okay, so we've got uh, bullpen and bench. Looks like this here down below is your lineup. So this is where you're gonna you're gonna have your players in your lineup here. So where the stadium card goes, uh, batter card, pitcher. So I'm curious. We've got first base, second, third, of course, home plate. Uh, is there maybe there's is there isn't there some sort of defense that comes into play here? Uh, so we got a discard pile and your strategy card pile. So uh, yeah, good size there. So let's fold that back up. So we're going to take a peek through the deck here. We're going to actually open up and take a look at uh, all of the decks. Just take a, take a quick peek here. All right, so let's zoom back in so we can get a really good look at the cards here. There we go. All right. So... I have to laugh because it says, well, this is a rare foil. Well, but it's with every one of these decks. So how is this a rare foil? <laughs> right? I guess that's how the rare foils look. Okay. So, yep. Chris. Yeah, sure enough. Chris Sale's a lefty. So that's what this is. Uh, and uh, no handedness. So there's the X number is one. So I guess if, uh, if you roll the one... And that falls into their X number. I guess that's uh, I guess it's a like they hung a pitch or something like that. So K one through seven, ground ball eight to twelve, fly ball thirteen to eighteen, walk uh, twenty to twenty two, twenty three and twenty four is uh as actual getting on base. Uh, so uh, looks like we've got kind of hard to make out with the foil, but it does look like we've got uh kind of like um. An endurance for Chris Sale here. Uh, defense value, and there is the salary, 605. And it's got a little K. So uh, I'm taking a guess that probably means that uh, that uh, Chris Sale is actually a strikeout pitcher. Right. Okay, Manny Machado. So uh, 
season 11 r0 okay so there we go we've got down here speed eight defense plus four and there's a salary and there are it looks like there are 400 cards because uh i did see that you can uh you can purchase the entire set from last year it's on sale right now the 2018 are on sale and they are uh i want to say it's 50 dollars for the entire set so we got araldus chapman the closer I'm wondering what the it's a minus one like cold machado we've got a plus one like hot so don't know what that would be noah Syndergaard, okay chris archer yeah, what's going on with Chris Archer? He used to be really excellent. Uh, he's kind of taken a couple of steps back the past couple of years. Maybe he just needs to get out of Tampa Bay. All right, Ryan Madsen. Uh, so we got HL. I'm not sure what that might represent. Hold? Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe that's what that... Because you know, it shows he's a relief pitcher. Tyler Flowers, he's a catcher for Atlanta, ex-White Sox. Jose Ramirez, I was going to say, uh, not the hitter. <laughs> no, he's a relief pitcher. Julio Tehran. Oh, there's quite a few Atlanta players here. Okay, Chris Davis. Well, there's talk about another guy who kind of, I don't know. I don't know what's happened to him. Uh, used to be just a uh, huge power and actually, you know, decent average struck out a ton. Now it's just, he strikes out a ton. So we got Chris Davis, Darren O'Day, one of my favorite relief pitchers, another Baltimore player. Okay. So we got, uh, Eduardo Nunez, utility player. Uh, I, I could have sworn Nunez usually played third base. Starlin Castro, ex-cub with Miami. Uh, so I'm guessing that uh, all these stats are based on the 2017 season is uh, what I'm kind of guessing here. So we've got Derek Dietrich, Dan Straley, eh, not much of a starter there. Aaron Hicks, good player. Uh, Aaron Hicks tends to be a, a better player when he's getting at bats. Uh, Jay Bruce. So they got left and right field. Yeah, so last year he started playing some first base. A.J. Ramos, relief pitcher from the Mets. So, yeah, so the East is basically National League and American League East. Mikhail Franco, he's a pretty decent hitter. Adam Morgan, not sure who he is. And the Hetcheveria, Hetcha. Yeah, it's his Hetcheveria, I thought. Uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah, he used to be with Miami. Randall Greitchuk. He was a Cardinal. And Aaron Loop. Matt Wieters. Ryan Zimmerman. Always liked Ryan Zimmerman. He's, uh, he's like the last remaining player on the Senators who, uh, was a Montreal Expo. All right, so those are the players there. So that's your team. That's your team of players. So you got 25 players. Got some good players in there in the mix. Uh, then we get, I guess these are, yeah, so these are strategy cards. So we've got uh, defense, fast worker 2.0, play after a 1 2 3 inning. Looking silly. Mound visit. Oh, these are cool. The five hole. Balls and strikes. Bobbled it. Inertia. Select a momentum card currently in play. This card remains in play for the entire game. Um, I wonder if this is the momentum card. If, uh, if maybe if there's a player out like on the base paths or something like that, maybe that's uh, the that momentum card. So it's a neutral, so it's neither. It's not uh, blue or red. Okay, escape artist, high heat. 
Make some noise, 2.0. Shut down defense. Silver lining. Under pressure. I do understand that there are some manager cards actually in here. Uh, check swing. Confidence shaker. First time, every time. Shaky start. Too hot to handle. Unmasked. Weather clear skies. There's a weather card. That's pretty wild. Okay, so we, now we've got the ballpark. So we've got... Uh, so this is what it looks like to me. Because we got the player names. And of course there's stats. Uh, well, there's no copyright on stats or licensing fee on stats. But uh, we are not seeing teams. We are not seeing ballpark names. So I'm taking a guess that uh, Clutch Hobbies has a deal with the um, the Players Association, but not with Major League Baseball. Because the Players Association would handle you being able to utilize the player names. But uh, if you didn't have a deal with MLB, then you won't be able to use the ballparks or the team names. So that's, uh, I bet you that's what it is. So we got Atlanta Park, Philadelphia Park, Miami Park, New York Mets at uh, City Field, and Tampa Bay Field. So each, uh, if you notice, each of the parks will have kind of a different effect, right? Highest fly ball on the pitcher's chart is a single. Home run on the pitcher's chart is a double. Really? I was going to say, lefties hit for power in City Field. That's kind of weird. Uh, main effect is negated. Tampa Bay batters, batter and pitcher's chart. Looks like there's got there's some cool stuff in this. So, okay, so there we go. That's uh, that's that deck. Just crack open these other ones. I'm just going to look at the decks. All right, come on, you. And you know what? We'll grab the other deck, too. And then we're going to crack open these boosters to take a look at the boosters here. Ah, Cody Bellinger. Cool. Jose Ramirez. Yeah, from the Indians. There we go. Okay, so let's look at the central. So I'd like to see what, uh, what Cubs that we get maybe in the mix here. Probably not many. I would take a guess not many because remember, this is a trading card game. So they're not going to they're not going to load you down with a bunch of players from teams that are super popular. Right. So, you know, you're, you're not going to run across a lot of Yankees. You're not running across a lot of Red Sox. You're not going to run across a lot of Cubs, probably not a lot of Dodgers. I understand how these things work. So here's that rare foil again. The Jose Ramirez. Uh, Jose Quintana, there you go. He's a Cub, Cubs pitcher. And that's it. <laughs> Is that the only Cub we got in here? Maybe. Uh, Rosale Iglesias, he's, he's actually a really good closer for uh, Cincinnati. Uh, Whit Merrifield, he's a pretty decent hitter. Second base from the Royals. Zach Davies, Brewers. You got here Molina from the Cardinals. Jose Abreu, hey, not bad from the White Sox, first base. Juan Minanya, must be a White Sox relief pitcher at the time. Oh, there, okay, Jason Hayward, that's the Cub. We get Jason Hayward. Oh, Justin Wilson, the relief pitcher who actually wasn't very good for the Cubs. Jose Peraza, Trevor Bauer, Jose Iglesias, Jordan Zimmerman, eh. Alex Gordon, Brandon Maurer, Orlando Arcia, Jonathan Villar, Jose Berrios, Byron Buxton. Really? A 10? I don't know. I, I didn't think he, he's much of a hitter. I mean, he's got tons of speed, uh, and he's a great outfielder, but yeah, he's not a very good hitter. 10 seems kind of high for him. Uh, Jason Castro, Jake Odorizzi, Jorge Polanco, Tyron Lyons, Blaine Hardy. Okay, so then we get more of these strategy cards. So I am not sure. Oh, okay. So there are 70 strategy cards because I can see right down here. We've got the little 
telling you how many of those there are. So uh, there are 70 strategy cards. Held the one setup man, twin killing, lead by example, speed demon, upper hand. Whoops. <laughs> Joe Madden. There we go. Remember, I said there's like there's manager cards. Jo okay, play before the start of any inning. Inning effect. You may use the following effects unlimitedly for this entire inning. Got offense and defense. So, uh, you roll the regular die to see if you add or subtract. This looks like both. Uh, it's once per defensive play or throw. Oh, okay. Two birds, one stone. We saw that one before. Six, five, full, double play. Child's play, double play depth. In command, no doubles. 90 foot dash, double steal. Fresh legs, leg it out. Super sub. Oh, that's kind of funny. Plus two to the swing if the pinch hitter has a salary greater than or equal to 150. <laughs> Plus three to the swing if the pinch hitter has a salary greater than or equal to 200. Uh, switch it up. What? You can choose the handedness of your batter for this at bat. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, to a switch hitter. Okay. I was going to say, what? Does it make anybody switch hitter? Ooh, brisk winds is the weather. Okay, so the ballparks we get. So, Cincinnati. Batter's home run one number lower, seventh inning or later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know if that has to do with the ballpark or actually the Reds uh, pitching staff that year. Uh, Pittsburgh. One number higher, yeah, because Pittsburgh's not a good power park. Uh, so, okay, so there's, uh, what is it? Guaranteed rate field. Kauffman Stadium. And Miller Park, which is no longer going to be called Miller Park. I forget what they're calling it. Some oddball name. Okay, so this is the other team. This is for the Central. This is the Central team here. And then let's take a look at the West team. So we already got Cody Bellinger which would be his Rookie of the Year year, right? 2017? I believe that's that would be correct. So we got Bellinger. We got Lance McCullers from the Astros. Kenta Mieta from the Dodgers. Chris Davis from Oakland. Yeah, I like Chris Davis. Chris Davis is a damn good power hitter. Robinson Cano. I can see this team is probably going to be built on offense, and their pitching staff will probably not be very good. Joey Gallo doesn't hit for a high average, but he's got loads of power. Uh, Brad Boxberger, halfway decent reliever. Uh, Cattell Marte, who I think he got traded to. No, he's still with the Diamondbacks. He was with um, Seattle. Herman Marquez, Brian Shaw, Trevor Story. A lot of power on this team. Evan Gaddis. Yeah, there's a lot of power on this team. Will Harris, relief pitcher. Martin Maldonado, catcher. Albert Pujols. Matt Shoemaker from uh, the Angels. Jack Peterson from the Dodges. Yeah, Luis Perdomo from San Diego. Yeah, the pitching is pretty bad on this team. Hunter Renfro, another San Diego Padre. Even Lingoria. Third baseman, Hunter Strickland. Yeah. Notice the pitchers are all like threes, fours. Not real good. Oh, Rugnet Ordor. Second baseman for the Rangers. I I always liked him. Uh, suddenly he had a lot of pop. I started wondering, hmm. Uh, Odor didn't have all that pop before, and suddenly he was like hitting a lot of home runs. Kind of, hmm. So we got breathing room, golden ratio, re-strategize, go big or go home, ribeye steak, upper decker. So these are all so far different. Bat flip, hot corner, look what I found. Not on my watch. Sit back down. Grab some bench. Where's grab some bench? Splitter, deep drive, 
Exuberant 2.0, Make Him Pay 2.0, Plunked, Primetime 2.0, Running on Fumes, <laughs> Mono Mono. <laughs> it's a neutral card. Now we got Scattered Showers for the weather. Okay, and then we get uh, Coors Field. Oh, yeah, plus one of the pitcher's X zone. Wow. Uh, then we got uh, Park out in Seattle. Plus one to the pitch of the losing team's pitcher. Okay. There there must be some sort of um, like season-long play that this would affect. Because how would you know who the losing pitcher was while you're playing? Uh, okay, so Dodger Stadium. San Diego and Texas. Now there's like a little little sun in the middle there. I wonder if they yeah, there's a lock on that one for Seattle. Uh, I would think uh, the lock probably represents a dome or a uh, retractable roof, which a lot of people don't realize that uh, because the Seattle ballpark has a roof, it is open to the elements, though. So uh, when early season games in Seattle, people think, oh, well, you know, they got a roof. Yeah, but it's but it's open to the elements. So people still freeze their butts off sitting in. Let's zoom out just a touch here. Uh, freeze their butts off sitting in the stands. OK, so we got the clutch 42. We got this black and then we've got the generation. So let's take a look at this mystery black one. See what's in here. So I'm wondering if this is just a, maybe a standard booster. So it just says clutch baseball cards. So upper decker held the one uh, locked in 2.0. So this is a, uh, this looks like this is uh, a foil card. Oh, Rafael Palmero. <laughs> Who? who used to be a player that everybody loved until he came out and said, yeah, I juiced. And then I was like, uh, you're not going to no Hall of Fame, man. So that's interesting. So it's from 19, his 1999. So this is what I was curious as far as like, uh, you know, like all stars or like historical players, great players, were they, was it going to be like a career average or was it going to be they're like a year from their career. So that's Palmero. What is this? It just says, doesn't say what year this is from. No, none of these do. Uh, so this is Zhu Wei Ying Ling. I, I'm not familiar with him. He's a utility player, infielder for the Red Sox. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, Highway Robbery. So we got another. Looks like a kind of a foil card here. So that's for defense. Al Leiter. There we go. If you watch uh, MLB Network, you get to see Al Leiter all the time. So this is from 98. It's only a five, though, huh? Interesting. Uh, Freddie Freeman. So this is, uh, these look like these are all foil. So here we go. Freddie Freeman. Charlie Blackman. Robbie Ray. Jackie Bradley Jr. I always wonder when he's he's finally going to like break out. Tyler Lyons, Ben Gamble. He's a good hitter. I like Ben Gamble. Although uh he's not with Seattle anymore, I think. Mike Leake, Ugh. and Juan Nicasio. All right, so it's kind of an odd mixture, right, of different cards. Let's see what we've got in Generations, which doesn't really have like a little nick for you to open it up. So I will make one. All right, let's see what we got. Johan Santana. Wow. OK, so is that like considered a foil? Because it's awfully shiny. There you go. From 04. Ryan Howard from 06. Scott Rowland. Wow, that's a blast from the past. 
Tom Glavin. Rafael Palmero again. So that's another Rafael Palmero. Livian Hernandez. There we go. Jose Vidro. I remember him. Uh, he was he was originally in Expo too. One second. So there's two Levon Hernandez's in here. Hey, what is that? Shouldn't be getting dupes in this. <laughs> so, and Roberto Hernandez, the closer for when he was with Tampa Bay. And then Andrew Suarez, starting pitcher for San Francisco. So, maybe, I think these might be, because this says this is 95 out of 100. So, I'm wondering if these are like, um, like the extra cards. Oh, here it goes. Rookie cards right there. Rookie card 2018 season. Hmm. Okay. So we got that. And then we've got the last one is the Clutch 42. Let's see what this is. Look at that. There you go. Right there. Jackie Robinson. So I wonder if Jackie Robinson's in all of these Clutch 42 packs. Okay. So we got Jackie Robinson. Oh, yes. Ernie Banks. Mr. Cub. Gotta like that. Bob Gibson. I think this, these are Negro League. But Negro League when they um, were actually playing in the majors. Because all three of these players so far were Negro League players. Yep, Satchel Page, sure enough. Uh, so this would be his... Well, that's with Baltimore. This is career year. And then we've got... Oh, look at that. So, Ebbets Field... Very cool. Players draw one card after scoring a run. Your strategy deck may contain 42 cards. Sweet. Very nice. All right. So that is what we find when we take all of this stuff from Clutch Baseball outside their boxes. So I am going to uh, have a chance to check this out and play. Uh, I will do my best to have a review done in time for opening day, which is nine days away. That's right. Opening day is March 28th. I know I'm looking forward to it. So, yes, I will make sure that I have a review uh, on the show before opening day. So people uh, who are looking for baseball games to play with, uh, you know, their family and friends will have kind of maybe a head start. All right. As I mentioned before, the uh, 2018 one player starter sets are currently on sale. Uh, like I said, they're either $8.99 or $9.99. And the new 2019 single player sets will be $19.99. And of course, there's a variety of different uh, different things that you can get. You, more sets together, the entire, uh, entire lineup of cards. I think the 2019 entire lineup of cards was like 130. So if you think about it, that's probably not so bad to get all of the cards considering um, you had 25 players for 20 bucks. So might be something to consider if it turns out this is a pretty good game. All right, so that is it for today's show. As I mentioned, on tomorrow's show, it's War Game Wednesday, so I will be cracking open Red Devils for the Sergeant's Miniatures game, which is from Lost Battalion Games. We're also going to take a look at uh, a couple of unmarked boxes, which I believe contain more uh, miniatures. So that is a World War II miniatures game, which I am sure my nephew Cameron is going to be like, dude, we got to play this right away. So I like to always say when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please stop over at thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. Enjoy the rest of your Monday night. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching.